Hey, what's up, guys? Awesome back here with another video. And Merry Christmas to you all. It is December 25th. It's Jesus' birthday. So make sure if you ain't showed him no worship or anything, no honor throughout the year that you do today. Um, make sure you go to church if you can this Sunday. Worship him. But um, I'm going to go over... A little thing I kind of picked up on last year, and that is how to get a bait in a tighter spot. I'm talking about, like, say you have a, I know it's not a good diaphragm, say you have a limb like that far over the water, and that's the only gap you have right there. But you have a stump kind of like that, and you need to get your bait right there. Well, you can't really skip. Because then if you do skip, you're going to hit that log. Well, you can't really pitch in there. Um, or flip your way in there. <clears throat> so to say. Because you're going to be hitting that tree nine times out of ten. Well, what you're going to do, you're going to get you a bit of a longer rod. This here ain't a good rod to do it with or try it. This is us a seven foot one fate black. I have it paired with a Corrado six five to one. This is a two hundred G six. Um, get you a longer rod six seven and get you some braid. I mean, if you are in that thick of stuff, you're gonna need something to get a good hook set. Cause chances are it's a brush under what you're flipping. Well, um, or you can get 20 pound P line tactical. That is really good line. Well, um, many people knows here in central Kentucky, it's snowed. We have a white Christmas and everything, so to speak. Um, it's cold. You don't want to be out there, but, uh, say you want to get better. Well, Shut your door in your room, in your house, in your closet, or whatever. Take your rod, the set or stand, and just take your line, pull out some line, and just practice getting under the crack of your door. Just keep going back and forth, back and forth. I suggest while you're in your house practicing with a shorter rod, like a 6'6 six six or something, that way you ain't hitting your ceiling as much. Um, and that will actually be harder to do with a shorter rod than a longer rod. Because a longer rod, you have more control over where your bait goes. So I'm just coming back and forth. I'm not skipping on the carpet or anything. I'm just making it right under that crack, not hitting the door. I hit it a few times right then. But when you get where you can put it where you want it by every time, then you can hear me hitting the door. When you can get it under there by every time without hitting the carpet, without hitting your door, then try something else. Pick a random corner and start flipping on it. Like that. Just start flipping in a random corner. Or take you a shoe. Take you several different shoes if you have them with different type bottoms take that bait and let's drag your jig on it and see which rod you have is the most sensitive now that i came up with literally the other day because i was just sitting here and i have a shoe rack on the back of my door because i have 30 pairs of shoes but um i was just sitting here like that and i could feel every aspect of that KVD, I mean KVD, daggone, he ain't got a shoe out, uh, that Kevin Durant sneaker. Practice looking at it, and then practice looking away. Just go to different shoes and try that, and then go back to flipping under the door. Because if you ain't done it in a minute, then you're going to be a little bit rusty. Now, for y'all folks that has a little bigger house, well, take you an ice cream bucket, get in your hallway, flip into it. 
that's how I got good at flipping, folks. Spring and summer and fall, I done that for an entire year. When I wasn't fishing, I was out in the yard flipping. That was when I was 14, 15 years old, didn't have a job or anything, didn't have no responsibilities. I was out there with a rod and reels, practicing flipping. And then when I got where I could make it over the lip into the bucket, well, I turned the bucket over on its side and I was just practicing flipping in it directly because that got me where I could, if I had to, where I could flip over brush or I could just flip straight into an area. Like say I'm in open water, I must fish in a bed, small mouth, large mouth bed like on Laurel. Well, it ain't going to have that much brush on it nine times out of ten. Just like this year in the back of Sam's branch, we saw smallmouth up on a red clay bank with rock. Well, that's wide open. I don't need to flip over anything. I can just flip right in there, kind of skip it on the water, and get it right in there. So, make sure to do that. And if you ain't got that big a house like me, say you have a trailer or a double wide, well, wait till spring. The Pick a corner in your house, start flipping into it, get under your door, take a shoe, get on it, or whatever. Thus, make sure you keep your reels oiled up, clean, and everything, because this winter process, it's bad for your reels. Um, if you're not going to be fishing this winter, a little tip I learned from Andrew Flair, back your tension knob almost all the way off, back your drag all the way off, oh, and if your reel has a DBS braking system, like this one here does, make sure to turn them off. He didn't say to turn them off, I just said that because honestly it couldn't hurt. So that way nothing's going to be locked up on your reel. Or anything that way it's good to go come spring um, if you have some baits I bring mine in in the winter because I don't want my hooks rusting that damp moist air can rust your hooks so I bring most of mine in that I use a lot like um, say my jig box that's always in here because I have a box full of jigs but um, crank baits come in here, spinner baits come in here. Basically, anything you have a lot of, you need to bring inside. Basically, protect your investment because I mean, a lot of people ain't got money to go out here by six megabytes at a time. Well, say your hooks is rusty. Yeah, I mean, you can get a pack of hooks, but why do that when you could easily just bring your tackle in the house? and go from there i mean you can put them anywhere like i got mine scattered out but i know where it's at but i ain't gonna keep y'all long on christmas day i know y'all spend time with your families and stuff um reason why i decided to do a video today not the past couple of days is honestly i just ain't felt like doing it I'm not making an excuse. I'm actually telling y'all the truth. I'm not looking for sympathy or anything. But I lost my mom last year in January 2nd. And honestly, this year, this don't seem like Christmas without her. Um, I have a good friend, Morgan. She lost her mother two years ago. And she always said her birthday, Christmas, or anything never felt the same. Well, I'm finally experiencing what she meant. Because it don't even seem like Christmas to me. I mean, it this honestly seems like another day. Uh, but it is Jesus' birthday, so... Um, definitely thankful for his blessing. Thankful for the opportunities I have to worship him. And uh, everything. But Christmas just don't seem the same. I mean, I, ain't, I wasn't... Excited this morning to get up, open my gifts. I wasn't excited about really any of my gifts. I'm just like, okay, thank you. Like, I'm thankful for the gifts I receive. I'm thankful for 
the Lord blessing them to bless me with the gifts. I'm thankful for the Lord to bless me to actually give gifts out um, and everything. But honestly, I just wasn't as psyched as I usually was. But that's why I hadn't done a video. I hadn't felt like it. I was thinking about Christmas, thinking about how it was going to hit me and stuff. But... I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you all for watching and y'all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So thank y'all.